How often have you heard scientists on the TV telling you how much sea level is going to rise in the next hundred years? Houses on the beaches will be flooded. Cities will have to be relocated. And they point to Cyclone Sandy that flooded New York. When Cyclone Sandy occurred, the pressure system of that hurricane was so low that the sea rose about four metres. Scientists are telling us that's what's going to happen because of global warming and the effect of increasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Their projections are coming from their models. Now in these models, these mathematical models, as the world warms, the sea expands slightly and that causes a rise in sea level. Glaciers melt and they are melting and, and that puts water into the ocean. And then of course, at some stage, the ice sheets in Greenland and maybe even Antarctica start to melt. Of course, what really matters is how sensitive the models are to changes in temperature and how right they are. But one of the problems the model has is that the sea, sea is not a, it's not like a bathtub. The ocean is a complicated animal. One side of an ocean can be two metres higher than another. There are tides. They go from one metre and the highest in the world about 14 metres. And of course, there are two tides in a day. But how do we measure sea level? How do we see what's happening in the past in order to check the models? Well, we've got two methods now of checking sea level. The first one is tide gauges. Now, tide gauges have been around for a couple of hundred years. They've been used in ports to check the high tide and the low tide. And when they were put in, they were not to check sea level around the world or to see what was happening, but really they were put in to help manage the port. Some, some ports, uh, the ships could only come in at high tide, for example. And some of these tide gauges around the world have been very, very well kept. So there is a database of tide gauges, some going back nearly 200 years. And we can use them to check to see what has actually happened in sea level as greenhouse gases have uh, risen since 1850 and the world has warmed slightly. There is a second method of checking sea level, but it only started in August 1992. NASA started to put up a satellite system and there's been a series of these satellites, Topex, Poseidon, Jason 1, Jason 2 and Jason 3. And these satellites measure the difference between the, the distance between the satellite and the sea and then compare that distance to a theoretical mathematical model of the Earth called a terrestrial geoid. Now the, the satellite is really only accurate to a couple of centimetres but the idea is that after a lot of iterations, they'll be able to get that accuracy down. And just remember that a one millimetre error in calculating sea level is equivalent to a 10 centimetre change in sea level over a century. Well, how can we check this data? Well, it's very good to go, first of all, to the International Panel on Climate Change. Its very first meeting in 1990, um, they formed a committee just to look at sea level. It was chaired by Professor Warwick from the University of East Anglia and Professor Ehrmans from Utrecht. And there were other experts co-opted into that committee. They said that they looked at tide gauge data over the last century. There was no evidence of any acceleration of sea level that sea level was going up at around 15 to 17 centimetres a century and not accelerating. Well, obviously, if it's going up at a steady rate, like a ramp, and not accelerating and getting steeper and steeper, then we can't have a very high sea level in the next 100 years. It's, it's going to keep up going around that 15, 17, 18 centimetres a century rate. However, they did mention in their committee report that the models were showing that sea level would accelerate in the next century. 
but they stressed that they could find no acceleration uh, in the 20th century up to 1990. When the IPC met again in uh, 1995, um, the Committee on Sea Level reported the same. No acceleration of sea level at all, just a steady rate, rising at a steady rate, like going up a ramp. When the committee met again, and uh, each committee is slightly different, they bring in different experts each time, but when it met in 2001, they had a problem. They had now had nine years of data from the satellite system, and they had the tidal gauge data. And they said, look, we've got a problem. The satellite data is showing sea level rising at twice the rate of the tide gauges. We wonder whether there's an instrumentation problem in the satellite. Uh, we're not sure. Uh, and the committee was really left in a quandary. They did mention, of course, that the models were showing that sea level would accelerate in the next century. When we came to the IPC meetings in 2007, and 2014, now maybe the scientists were so convinced their models were right, they tended to take the satellite data and they even jumped between both sets. For example, saying that sea level was rising at a steady rate to 1990 and since that time the sea level rate had changed up to 30 centimetres a century, so it was steepening. Now, putting forward these ideas was really helping to justify the models. But really, how could that be right? How can you jump from one method that is really showing a steady rate and then go to a different method and say you're doing the same thing? Uh, that doesn't sound like very good science. Now, the reports of those committees were complicated because they really ignored some data that was coming out. For example, in 2011, the US Army Corps of Engineers analyzed tide gauges uh, in uh, the East Coast of America, the West Coast of America, Alaska, European coast, and uh, in Australia and New Zealand, where they got a database from the uh, CSIRO, a, a scientific organization in Australia. They said that there was no evidence of acceleration of sea level in the last 120 years, up to 2009 was their database. Um, they said, as a matter of fact, in the last 20 or 30 years, the tide gauge data suggested sea level rise had started to slow down. And they pointed out there was a huge discrepancy with the models and that problem really had to be solved. That uh, it seemed that the satellite data was wrong and that there was an instrumentation problem. Well, their query was answered the next year in 2012 when the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena made a proposal to Congress for a new satellite system called GRASP. They wanted to replace the present satellite system on the basis that really uh, it was prone to a lot of error and they, they wanted to change it. They said it was bringing in errors into the altimetry system. In other words, it was giving us an idea of how sea level was changing relatively between A and B, but it wasn't giving us good absolute data as to exactly how much sea level was rising. So here, NASA was saying we have a dodgy satellite, and yet the IPC was taking the satellite data and using that to scare the living daylights out of us. There is a rather famous case in Australia where some environmental consultants were asked to report to a local authority as to sea level rise. And they said, well, we've got a tide gauge data, and we've got that in Sydney from the Fort Denison, regarded as one of the best tide gauges in the world. It's been analysed by the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Association of the United States by the Hadley Centre in England, and it showed the sea level rising at a steady rate in the last century and around Sydney never more than about 10 centimetres a century. But what did these consultants do? They adjusted this tide gauge, which is in a deep water harbour where the data has been kept religiously. They, had, they adjusted the data up to the satellite data. So now Fort Denison was showing a sea level rise not of less than 10 centimetres a century, 
but of 30 centimetres a century. Now, since 2014, uh, the IPC meeting then, there's also been a couple of more important reports. In 2016, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association of the United States released another analysis of 200 tide gauges, this time the east coast and the west coast of America, some Atlantic islands and some Pacific islands. Again, no acceleration of sea level in 140 years. So here we have a situation where greenhouse gases have risen 40% and yet there's been no acceleration of sea level and the models require acceleration of sea level to get to these high levels at the end of this 21st century. All through these IPC reports, um, the question really wasn't asked, well, if greenhouse gases have gone up 30 to 40 percent, like 30 percent by 1990, 40 percent, say, by 2014, how come sea level hasn't already started to accelerate? Why are we putting acceleration in the models in the coming 80 years when there's been no acceleration in the previous 120 years? It's obvious that the models are wrong. It's obvious that a lot of scientists who put their life into creating these computer models and are so obsessed with these models are so reluctant to start changing the models and to acknowledge there's a problem. It is quite evident that in nature there's more checks and balances that we know. It's quite obvious that there are unknowns that aren't in the models and so the models are not predictive tools at all. So the next time some scientist gets up on TV and tries to scare the living daylights out of you and tell you that sea level could be going up a metre or five metres this century, just remember what the tide gauges are telling you and take whatever he's telling you with a pinch of salt.